thank you for tuning into the podcast. As always, I'm grateful for your interest and your support. In this episode, I'd like to share some reflections on sarcasm. I begin by suggesting that we live in a culture that is suffused with sarcasm. For example, I understand that foreign students who want to learn English are often confused by the level to which we use sarcasm. They don't understand our overuse of phrases like, yeah, right, or big deal, or aren't you special? And I would suggest that this speaks to a deeper spiritual issue for us, both personally and collectively. We might ask ourselves, why are we collectively addicted to a way of communicating that is insincere and to many people hurtful? Sarcasm is as old as the Bible. Here's a quote from the book of Proverbs. Like a madman who throws firebrands, arrows, and death is the man who deceives his neighbor and says, I am only joking. We can see what the ancient author is getting at. It's not funny. The Gospels record that sarcasm was among the ways that Jesus was degraded by his executioners. Recall the scene from the Passion Narratives wherein Jesus' torturers place a crown of thorns on his head while sarcastically saying, Hail, King of the Jews. I grew up in a place where sarcasm was the primary way that men, especially, related to each other. Around certain people, including some in my family, and many teachers I had, I was often left feeling on the defensive and always waiting for the other shoe to drop. Sarcasm was used to dominate. It was power over. In the classroom, it was control through fear of being shamed. I don't remember everything these sarcastic people said, but I do remember how it made me feel. Sarcasm, I think, is used for a number of reasons. It might be a way of protecting against vulnerability. Some people fear exposure and they don't really want to be known, so they keep others off balance and at a distance with cutting words. Perhaps we see that sarcasm is a way to have power over others and it can be used to oppress. Maybe there's underlying resentment that is covered by sarcasm. A person I know referred to her husband as the Lord of the Manor and himself, she would say, is himself ready for his dinner? She couldn't communicate in a healthy, mature way about the unresolved issues between them, so she used sarcasm instead. I think with some of us, we've become so used to being sarcastic with each other that we don't know any other way to be. And if we broke the cycle of sarcasm and spoke authentically and gently, the other wouldn't know what to do. Those who use sarcasm try to cover themselves by saying, it's just a joke, or lighten up, or I was just teasing. Now, I have to say, I have never experienced it as effective to say to someone, lighten up. That always makes it worse. It's like saying to someone, calm down. It has the opposite effect. What's more, when someone expresses the hurt they feel about sarcastic comments, they are victimized again because their feelings are invalidated. Jesuit brother Joe Hoover recently published a very thoughtful and on-point article about sarcasm in America Magazine. I'd like to share something he said near the conclusion. And how rare and liberating it is to be around the non-sarcastic, to do a thing around someone and not be comically judged to be accepted as you are with no teasing, no irony, no edgy jesting, to feel safe around people. How freeing to be around others who respect social boundaries, who can intuit that what most of us need at any moment, that what truly lightens us up is sheer acceptance, acceptance of exactly who we are. So I'd like to invite us to be attentive to our use of sarcasm. If we are purveyors of it, we might ask why. Are we hiding behind the barbs? Are we trying to keep others at a distance? What is the unnamed, unclaimed issue we are covering over with sarcasm? Is it anger or insecurity? Or maybe we just have poorly developed social skills. Whatever it is, we are paying a high price in ill will, 
hurt feelings and alienation. And if we find ourselves on the receiving end of sarcasm, we might practice a little trinity of phrases that can help us set boundaries and spotlight the hurtfulness of the words. These are when you, I feel, because. Now I know that that can sound kind of straightforward in an almost childish way, but it does help us to communicate clearly. For example, you could say, when you refer to me as the Lord of the Manor, I feel frustrated and confused because I know I'm not the Lord of anything and it's not clear to me what you mean by that. Again, that spotlights the words and sets a boundary and communicates in a clear, mature way. If we can break our addiction to sarcasm, we can break a cycle of verbal and emotional pain that we are transmitting to each other. And this has a healing impact for those in our orbit and for the world. I'd like to leave you with the words of the author to the letter to the Ephesians. That one wrote, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And with that, let's go into a moment of meditation. <laughs> 